All right, everyone, welcome back to our mechanics and materials sequence. And in this, pro in this video, I'm going to do a simple example problem on how to calculate shear stress in beams. And what we're going to do is basically apply the transverse shear formula here and uh, calculate the shear stress in, in a beam. And so I, I got a simple structure here, simply support a beam at ends uh, A and B with a 200 pound per foot load and eight foot long beam right here. Here's what my cross section looks like. So if I were to take a view or a cut here, if I could actually look this way on the beam, I would see here this, this cross section view. Uh, what we want to do is find the maximum shear stress in the beam. And so, so the first thing that we need to do here in order to find this maximum shear stress is one, do our statics and draw the V diagram, the shear diagram here. And so this is pretty simple, you know, this this structure, the boundary conditions, as far as we are concerned, are symmetric uh, because AX is going to be zero. So the boundary conditions are symmetric and the loading is symmetric. That means each of these, A and AY and BY, are both going to be equal. So 200 times 8 uh, gives me a resultant here of 1,600 pounds, which means that AY will be equal to 800 pounds. They'll take half. And BY will also take half. So that hopefully that makes sense to you. When the loading and the boundary conditions or reactions are symmetric, then you're good to go, right? And now we want to draw the shear diagram. And that shear diagram, it's we're going to use a graphical approach, which shouldn't be too foreign to anybody here watching this video here. But here in the shear diagram, V and we'll put units of pounds force right here. And here, what happens is you go start from here going left to right. AY goes up to 800 pounds right here and then down to minus 800 over here. And so this will be linear and hopefully I can draw a straight line and that looks pretty straight and this should be at mid span. This distance right here should be L over two or, or four feet. Okay, so this should be four feet here. So our, our maximum shear um, occurs at, at the support. So max shear at supports. That's something we note. Max shear along the length of the beam is at the supports and within a cross section the maximum shear stress max shear stress in a cross section in cross section occurs when it's linear elastic at the neutral axis of my cross section here and so i expect my 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 max shear stress to occur right Oh, where this two inch line is right here, but this, this being two inches, my neutral axis, because this is a symmetric shape, is right here. This is my neutral axis, and my max shear stress will occur there at that location. So, with that being said, since we know where the max shear occurs and what the maximum shear stress, where that is, we can go ahead and proceed. And that, those are really the two important things that you have to figure out. So the f next thing you want to do, once you can understand where the, the maximum shear stress is and, what, um, and where it occurs, you want to do some section properties or geometric properties of the cross section. And looking at that formula here, this tau equals VQ over IT, the, ge you know, the geometric properties are I, T, and Q right here. Okay, so I is the moment of inertia of the entire cross section about the neutral axis. So if I look at this cross section over here, uh, this thing right here is symmetric. Even the holes that if I if I were to look at this, so let me isolate this. I've got a computer, so let me bring it, copy, bam, move this down. You can fast forward this. No one's offended if you do. But here, if I if I look at this over here, you know this neutral axis of the whole thing is just I can look at instead of trying to do parallel axis theorem a quick way because the, again the cross section is symmetric about about the neutral axis and this red square is also has the same centroid as my voids here these share the same neutral axis if you will I can just say that I about the neutral axis the moment of inertia is 1 12th the large square 1 12th base which is 8 inches times the height 8 plus 2 plus 2 is 12 inches cubed minus the holes which is minus 2 holes times 1 12th the width of this hole which is 8 minus 2 
So three times the height of that whole eight inches cubed here. And this, if when I work this out, will give me 896 inches to the fourth right there. Okay, so that's, that's one thing that's done. So bam, I, done. The thickness that we are going to use in this is where we're interested in the maximum shear stress. And in this case, we're interested in the maximum shear stress at the neutral axis. So we want this thickness right there through the cross section. So in this case, this is two inches because that's where we want the maximum shear stress or that's where the maximum shear stress occurs. And, and now we want this first moment of area. And for this first moment of area, let me get rid of some of these lines here make this drawing a little bit clearer here here right here okay and so here if i fill these back in right here here's my neutral axis again right there okay so the q q is the first moment of area of the entire cross section above or below where you want the shear stress so A prime times Y bar prime. Maybe you've seen it like this right here. So in this case here, for Q, I can look at either. I want, I want the shear stress right here on this line right here at the neutral axis. So I can look at the area, everything above or everything below. And if I choose the, uh, everything above, all I got to do is break this up into two elements. I want to break it up into this element here, the flange, and then this portion of the web. I'll use, let me use purple for the second area right here. Bam, like this. And I need to know the distance of the centroid of each of these from the neutral axis. So I'll call this uh, Y1 prime. This will be area 1. And then the centroid of this area will be Y2 prime right there. And, and really, you just got to fill in. I have two areas. So I'm going to have two things I'm going to sum up. And so here, this would be for, the first, um, for this first area, which I'll call this one 1 call that one and this one will be my two area here so here I would have you know a1 y1 bar prime plus a2 y2 prime where y prime is the distance to the center of that area from the neutral axis and so here this would just be a1 is this purple zone right here which would be four inches times two inches that's the area times the distance to the neutral axis which would be here again this is four inches this y1 prime is two inches plus the area of this yellow which would be eight inches times two inches times the distance from the neutral axis to the centroid of that area two or that yellow zone and that would be um, four plus one that's going to be five inches and i just sum that up right there and that's going to be 96 inches cubed and once i've got all that everything now is just a straight up plug and chug so here if i plug and chug plug and chug over here so this would be part three plug and chug so apply tau equals vq over it right here and this tau max tau max is equal to the shear at that location which was 800 pounds times q the q 96 inches cubed over the moment of inertia which is 896 inches to the fourth times t two inches which is equal to and and if you run this through your calculator i got 42.86 psi right there so hopefully that was pretty interesting and useful for you at least for a first application and maybe we'll do something a little bit more interesting and exciting and perhaps you know i think one thing i would recommend is you try to draw the stress profile for this cross section and see what that looks like maybe i'll do that in another video all right enjoy see ya or the shear stress profile, shear stress profile for this video. All right, take it easy. Bye.